Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Tuesday, June 5th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And we are joined, of course, here in the studio by the wonderful Caitlin Moynihan. Hey! And we have a very special guest with us. Yes. 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 We have Cheech Manahar here from Mean Girls. Very Woo! excited about to 12 teach. 12-time yes. Tony-nominated musical. Absolutely. He's playing Kevin G. We'll talk to him about that and the show yeah. and the Tony nominations and everything else. But first, let's get today's top five. Hey guys, so a new doctor is gonna find out what baking can do. Ooh, hey, I like that. Yes, Caitlin's great at nice <laughs> work, Caitlin. So Eric Bergen is joining the cast of Waitress tonight. Yeah, in the role of Doctor Pometer. Uh, Madam Secretary star, Jersey right. Boys tour oh, Jersey, star. Jersey yes, Boys. he originated he did the film as well. And he right? did the film, originated the role of Bob Gaudi on the tour, and then mm -hmm. played it in the film. Uh, this is technically his Broadway debut. Which is crazy to think but about. But actually, as a 10 year old kid, he voiced, like, did voiceover work in Wendy Wasser scenes in American Daughter on Broadway. Wow. So, oh. so his voice his was voice actually was on Broadway. His voice has been but on now it. he will be fully <laughs> present in We Waitress. get to see the whole thing. Yeah. All right, fantastic. And Indeed. he's running uh, June 5th. Yeah, uh, through August 12th. Fantastic. Yeah. Can't wait to see you. So Dreamgirls is actually going somewhere. They're not going nowhere. They're going somewhere. Aww. Oh, and unfortunately that's off the stage oh. for now. So the show is closing January 12th, 2019. So if you live over in London, the UK, you still have time to go see Dreamgirls. This, of course, is directed and choreographed by Casey Nicola, yes. who is represented by Mean Girls yeah. here as well. <laughs> um, it'll be The show will be launching a UK tour with full, di full dates to be announced at a later date. Um, and Andy, what can you tell us about the Broadway transfer rumors of Mean Girls? Yes, so we've been hearing rumors for a while about this production transferring to Broadway. Uh, there are no solidified details mm -hmm. yet about it coming over, but I don't see any reason why it would not. No. Casey Nicola is a hit maker. Absolutely. Uh, this is a beloved show. It got rave reviews in London. Right. So I, think I think we did a poll recently of shows that we want to come back. And this, I think, yeah. was pretty close to the top. People would really like to see this. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we will. Yeah. Or we'll just follow them around the UK. <laughs> see the UK tour. Indeed. And we have a new mom looking for a map in Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> you Guys, are awesome, I'm sorry. Caitlin. I'm sorry. <laughs> win, I'm sorry. Win, win. No apologies. Okay, so Broadway veteran Jessica Phillips has signed on for the Dear Evan Hansen tour. Yes. She's, she's yeah, go ahead. She's going to play Heidi Hansen, <laughs> uh, the right. role that won a Tony Award for Rachel Bay Jones. Rachel Bay Jones. Absolutely. Ooh. She's joining the previously announced. Ben Levi Ross mm -hmm. in the role of Evan Hansen. Right, who comes right from the Broadway company. Yes. Yeah. And uh, performances kick off this October at the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. Yep, and headed to over 50 cities that Dear Evan Hansen tour. And I believe we're going to be learning lots of casting over the next little bit. So keep your right. eyes peeled. Um, we're going to fill up that cast of the Dear Evan Hansen tour. That's uh -huh. so exciting. Fill up the cast. Fill like, up that yeah. cast. Like, Ooh, sorry. Like that. <laughs> See? Well, You're doing that. on purpose. I can do them too. <laughs> <laughs> like. Well, we're only one hand's worth of fingers away from the Tony Awards, and we are learning more about the presenters. Yes. So obviously, as Paul and I talked about recently on a different on another episode of Live at Five, it's all about the nominees and the winners and the shows and the performances. But all of the celebrities that we get to see at the Tony Awards are very exciting. Upcoming beautiful star Melissa Benoist is going to be there, as well as Catherine McPhee in Waitress, as well as Eric, Eric Bergen. Bergen. Uh, Hello Dolly star Bernadette Peters, of course, will be there. Um, and then Titus Burgess, of course, of uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which just came back for a new season. Patty Lupone. Robert De Niro, Kelly O'Hara, Billy Joel, and more. Of course, the Tony Awards are happening this Sunday, June 10th, on CBS, hosted by Sarah Bareilles and Josh Groban. We're so excited. It's all so we're talking excited. about. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to see all the stars. And I cannot wait for the public theater's new season. It's going to be insane. Yes. So we have an Crazy. incredible 2018-2019 season at Off-Broadway's public theater. Yeah. Uh, some of the highlights include 
Girl from the North Country, which is this incredible collaboration between Connor McPherson and Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan. which has been a big hit in London, right. and mm -hmm. we were all wondering where it was going to land over here, and mm -hmm. the public seems like a great fit. Fantastic spot yeah. for it, yeah. So that'll be there. Uh, some of the other highlights are Seawall slash A Life. Now, now this, this is, is interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is actually two one-act monologues mm -hmm. written by... Uh, gosh, who remind me who they're written by? Um, uh, Nick Payne wrote A Life, who also wrote Constellations, which right. Jake Gyllenhaal yes. appeared in on Broadway. Oh Jake Gyllenhaal is going to appear in this production, the second half right. uh, here. And the first half is Seawall, which is going to star Tom Sturridge, recently, recently of 19 was on Broadway in 1984. Right. Yeah, and got so a Tony nomination for Orphans. For Orphans, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also interesting... Productions that are coming, Mother of the Maid, which is going to be starring Glenn Close. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's headed. And a new world premiere um, by Susan Laurie Parks, Pulitzer Prize winner, White Noise, is going to be happening February 19th Mar through March 30 of her 31st of 2019. Um, and... Yeah, there's a few world premieres. There's yeah. all sorts Oh, and of stuff. also, I just remembered, Simon Stevens wrote Seawall. Yes, He's the course. Tony winning yep. playwright of Curious Incident. Wow. Right. So lots of, lots lots of stuff headed to the public. Work with the public I can't as wait. always. Mm -hmm. As always, yeah. yes. Well, Andy, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ryan. Such a pleasure doing the news with you. Yes, indeed. Caitlin, will you tell us a little bit about today's guest, Cheech? Sure. Guys, we have Cheech in the studio today. He is making his Broadway debut as Kevin G in the Tony-nominated hit show, Mean Girls. He is recent Syracuse Drama alum. His regional credits include Mean Girls at the National Theater, West Side Story at Finger Lakes Musical Theater Festival, Mary Poppins, and New Kids at the Syracuse Stage. Cheech is also a trained Bollywood dancer. hey -o. Make sure to follow Cheech at... I have to throw that in. <laughs> Make sure to follow him on Instagram at Cheech Manohar and leave all your questions in the comments below. Welcome, Ryan and Cheech. Hello there, Hi. sir. Thank you so much for coming by the Broadway.com studio. I am so excited with to be us. Here. We've had a few of you Mean Girls yeah. cast members around yeah. here recently. We're, we're, we're really into you guys. We really. Uh, well, we're very into you guys as well. <laughs> You're our Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winning favorite new musical. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, as Andy mentioned, 12 Tony Award nominations going into this Sunday. Tell us a little bit about the what's the mood at the August Wilson Theater with this show right now. How, how are you guys all feeling about all of this excitement going on around? Uh, well, we couldn't be more thrilled about it. I feel like all of us have put in a lot of work when it comes to the show. We've all, you know, we've all been dancing our butts off on stage, <laughs> doing lots of press, lots of press, <laughs> lots of uh, lots of events. But um, I think more than anything, all of us are just so excited that a lot of people are coming to see the show. Yeah. Um, I think, the, I mean, the the movie is 14 years old at this point, and we've updated it for the, the stage. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we can get uh, a bunch of new people, a bunch of people that are our age, as well as their parents, as right. well as maybe, like, kids that usually wouldn't be coming to see Broadway shows uh, and to see the and to see us is something really spectacular. It is. It yeah. is. I want to learn a little bit about your journey to Mean Girls. So you, this is your Broadway debut, as it Caitlin is. mentioned. Um, and you got the job just about right after finishing college, right? I Take did. us through how it all broke down for you. Um, well, I, I graduated from Syracuse University. And Syracuse, for their last semester, moves all of their performance major students to New York City. Oh, okay. So I was actually in New York starting in January. So it was kind of a transition semester that happens. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after I graduated, uh, I found out that there was going to be an EPA for Mean Girls. And so I wrote a... Uh, a parody rap mm -hmm. to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. <laughs> and I went into the EPA. And yeah. then from there, they asked me to come back to the ECC to see if I could dance. And then from there, it was, I think, nine callbacks in wow. three weeks. Wow. And uh, I found out that I got it about one month after graduation. That's nuts. That's nuts. <laughs> Truly crazy. <laughs> and what, what was that audition room like? So, who, so did you have Tina in there? You had Jeff? You had Casey? So the the final audition was everyone. It was the whole shebang. Walked in, it was like a room of 12 people, and right in the middle is Tina Fey, Jeff Richmond, Nell Benjamin, Casey Nicholas. Wow. I'm like, oh, great. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> But you, uh, you clearly nailed it. You, I mean, you and you're our Kevin G. I, That's yes, <laughs> I am. I am. Um, no, I mean, as 
intimidating as that room could have been, uh, it's so clear that the four of them care so much about this show. Yeah. Um, and that they care so much about, you know, doing, doing this story. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and they are some of the most collaborative people that you could ever work with. I mean, they're, they're so not precious about their work. Okay. Um, any, they, take time to hire the right people. But mm -hmm. I, I think after they do, they really, they trusted us in taking ownership of the roles, which is really cool for me, right. especially right out of college. I was going to say, this is kind of like an ideal situation where you're entering like a, a, a big show with incredible people involved and right out of college. And you all do seem like you genuinely are close and like each other. Yeah, like, me too. <laughs> I mean, you like a lot of people come, like to come in and be like, oh, Oh, they're my favorite people in the world. No, you genuinely all seem like you love each other. Has it been a bonding experience for all of you to be on this journey together? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think as soon as we went to DC, we realized that the show was going to be a lot bigger than just the 30 of us. Mm -hmm. um, and being being at the national and seeing those audiences and seeing those stage doors at an out of town tryout, I think it, it felt like summer camp for yeah, all of us. I yeah. mean, <laughs> we were all in the theater for like 12, maybe more hours a day, you know, changing things during previews. But I mean, unless you get along super, super well with your <laughs> cast, I mean, you wouldn't be able to survive that kind of an experience. Right. I mean, we, we really have become one really, really strong, tight knit community. Yeah. No, we've tried to get the dirt out of all the guests that we've had from the Mean Girls. <laughs> been like, who's the meanest? Who's the gossip? And all of you are like, no, everyone's so nice. Everyone's. Yeah, everyone's. Yeah. I, I was like, <laughs> here's the thing: is that there, you're. You're never going to get thirty artists in the same room without disagreements, right? Sure. But yeah. like. I think the point of the show is that not everyone has to be best friends, but everyone mm -hmm. treats each other with dignity. Absolutely. And so that's what we do. I mean, we have disagreements just like a normal family would, but uh, we're going to resolve them with each other because yeah. we love each other at the yeah. end of the day. And you put on a heck of a show. Ah, thank that's, you. We of course. That. No, of course. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, um, were you a, a fan of the movie ahead of time? Like, oh, yeah. did you think <laughs> like when you found out this was all happening, did you think like, oh, I want that role. I would love to be in that. Show. Yes, absolutely. It it was um there were rumors that it was happening for a while because the lab happened that I, I wasn't a part right. of and and so there were you know, I was in Syracuse, which is kind of a removed situation from the city, but um as soon as I heard that it got whiffed that it might be a thing that ha was happening, I instantly started, you know, trying to figure out if it was actually happening, if there was an EPA happening, where mm -hmm. I could get seen, how I could get seen for it. So, yeah. no, I'm, I was a huge fan of this movie. Right. Especially of, of Kevin G. I yeah. Mean, growing up, there weren't a ton of uh, stereotype-breaking brown characters sure, that right. I could see on television or in movies. Uh, characters that, you know, maybe were nerds, but didn't didn't act like it <laughs> right um there definitely weren't a lot of like 90s early thousands uh r&b hip-hop gangsta <laughs> indians going around no, no i think you're right i think yeah. and you got to meet rajiv Surendra too i like, did you, but you, the original kevin g did he had come and seen the show is that what was that meeting like um well i i actually read his memoir while i was auditioning for the show stop it yeah this is, <laughs> it's the universe yeah, all aligning it was, it was great i mean i I found that he had written a memoir. I decided that I was going to read it during the show. And his memoir is all about like creatively uh, moving forward from failure, I mm -hmm. guess. And so it was one of those things where I read it and I was like, wow, even if I don't get this, I'm going to be okay. Right. Luckily I didn't have to deal with that at the time. But um, when I, when I met him, it was just like, it was meeting someone that I had come to deeply respect on so many artistic levels mm. Um, and he is the nicest human you could ever meet in your life. Great. We actually, we've become friends now. He, he actually recently just gifted me, um, one of the chains that he wore in the movie. No way. Yeah. Oh, wow. He was back at his home in Toronto and going through a box of movie things and oh, then he brought so it to great. New York. Yeah. It was really that's sweet so of him. Nice. You uh, grew up in Pittsburgh, right? I did. Is that, so, uh, that's a, you know, a, an art filled city. Is yeah. this, is this something you always kind of knew you wanted was performing what you always thought you wanted to do or did you find a different path to it? Um, it was definitely 
always something I knew I wanted to do. I didn't always know that it was a thing I could do. Okay. Um, my parents and I had an agreement when I was graduating from high school that I would apply to the same number of pre-law schools as I would musical theater schools. Okay, all right. I was like, a, you know, there was a big emphasis on like job security that Sure, happened. of course, and as parents. As parents, yeah. And I think with them specifically, I, we didn't see a lot of Indians on, on Broadway, in Broadway right. shows. Um, there weren't a lot of, you know, non-accented Indian characters that existed mm. in Broadway musicals. Mm -hmm. um, and so for them, I, I, when we had gotten into the schools that I had gotten into, for them, they were like, do you really think you're <laughs> able to, like, give up this pretty stable law career in order to go into musical theater? And I was like, I think that's what I have to do. I yeah. think that's the, the path that I have to go. And I'm lucky that I have parents that supported me. Absolutely. And I've seen you bring up a couple of times that you, with this, with what you're doing now, you obviously want to be a great performer, but you also want to be a great role model for other people. Is that something that is always kind of? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess you could, I guess you'd say that. I don't know if it's necessarily an active thing that I have in my head always, mm -hmm. but it is definitely uh, something that I, I would love to be. Uh, yeah. I, I've had a lot of like smaller brown children and teenagers come up to me and say like, it's so exciting for me to see this character on stage yeah. and for it to be, you know, not what I'm always seeing. Um, that's really cool to me. And it would make me the happiest person in the world if like when Mean Girls went on tour in 2019 and like when it continued uh, its life, uh, other really stereotype breaking interesting brown actors came out of the woodworks and were able absolutely. to take on this role absolutely well let's find out what some of your fans and some of the show's fans right. and some of yeah. our fans would <laughs> like to know from you Cheech. totally uh elise wants to know if you could switch roles with one, with one of your mean girls co-stars who would you want to switch with oh 100 percent carrie butler <laughs> i want to play <laughs> I've said this so many times. I want to play Mrs. George more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> what What would your take on Mrs. Yeah. George be? What's I think it's just like really uh, Cheryl <laughs> and Vaxman and just like a little bit Harry. I, I think it'd be great. Yeah, no, I'm I mean, really... I'm, Harry Butler has set a high bar. Well, Carrie but Butler is amazing, <laughs> yeah. but I'm always off stage right bef listening to her right before I have to enter, like for mm -hmm. like Who's House and things. Mm -hmm. And so myself and a couple of the other ensemble members are like always doing her scenes to each other <laughs> backstage. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's amazing. Um, Alec wants to know what is your favorite moment that happens on the show in the show? Mm. Ooh. Oh, okay. There is, um, there's a moment, uh, Kate Rockwell, when she sings sexy, she oh, goes, yes. uh, she sings the beginning of the song and she like, Karen messes up and she goes, wait, I'm going to start over. And she like, walks off stage <laughs> in complete <laughs> silence and like the lights go out and then she comes back on stage and like the song just restarts again it's and it is so great it is like i can't imagine how scary it must be for her to just like right. take actual 10 seconds of silence on stage but it is when i saw that the first time in rehearsal i thought it was the funniest thing i'd ever seen in my life yeah it's so great I know. Great. When I saw it in D.C., everyone was just, like, laughing so, so, so hard. How could you not? <laughs> Kate Rockwell is a genius. She is. She is. Um, Ash moment. wants to know who are your favorite uh, pair to listen to, like, on stage during on the show. On stage. Yeah. Favorite pair to yeah, listen like to. Yeah, like, scene interaction. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, that's a fun question. Um... I really like, I really, okay, it's cheesy, but I do really like listening to Kyle and Erica do their scenes together. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're so sweet. Yeah. I mean, they are really just the epitome of like weird, mushy high school feelings <laughs> for each other. Mm -hmm. it, it's like awkward and you don't really know how to handle it, but they're getting through it. It's really sweet. Right. When you, I wanted to ask earlier, when you found out that when Carrie Butler was a part of all of this, how big of a fan of Broadway were you ahead of it? Like, yeah. were you, was it intimidating at all to meet? It? Carrie Butler. Carrie but and so Jen. Carrie Butler actually came and did a workshop at Syracuse when I was a student right, there. So I like, right. I actually got to like see her in a workshop <laughs> setting once. And it was, it was very strange walking into a room and being like, hi, like she obviously doesn't, wouldn't remember me because mm -hmm. she does a million of these workshops. But I was like, it was very, very intimidating for me to be like, you are very well respected. <laughs> In the Broadway community and at my school, and yeah. I've seen you work, and I, I know, I definitely know you. Hi, my name is Cheech. <laughs> oh, that's adorable, though. 
it's like totally normal. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of this process has been me just like pretending not like having to go, hi, I know so much about you. My right. name is Cheech. It's nice to meet you. Well, and one of the funny things I think about specifically about the Broadway community is that a lot of these interactions happen because a lot of these people are such fans before they get involved. Yes. And luckily, the Broadway community is the nicest. They're all so nice. It is. Everyone's just so wonderful and so happy to meet. So I'm sure she does remember. Yeah, she's I'm very sure, sweet. I'm sure she does. <laughs> Some people, they want to know what roles you had in high school or middle school, mm. like what shows you did. Oh, interesting. I, um, our high school was very into doing like obscure shows. So we did like working and I played Charlie Blossom, the hippie. Right. Um, we did sweet charity. I played daddy Burbeck. Um, and then, uh, but the one like big show we did in high school, we did in the Heights. Um, and I got to, my best friend and I switched back and forth. We played Usnavi and Benny and Mm -hmm. we would switch back and forth every day for three weeks. And you did get to meet Lin-Manuel Miranda. I did. (laughs) What was that meeting? Again, another, (laughs) (laughs) I know who you (laughs) are. (laughs) Hi, I know who you are. It was definitely like the coolest person that we've had backstage to this point. It Mm -hmm. was actually, um, earlier in that day, uh, Carol Burnett had come to see the 2 PM show. Okay. And so it was like, I mean, every female comedian in the cast was like, okay, you're my idol. Yeah. And yeah, then when yeah. Lin-Manuel Miranda came to see the 8 PM show, it was like that experience for <laughs> <laughs> idol filled day. Yeah, truly. Right. And who, yeah. Who are some of the Broadway people that you grew up looking up to admiring? Like who, who inspired you as you were making your way here? Um, I, I mean, I, the biggest one of them would definitely be Lin-Manuel Miranda. Would, yeah. I mean, it, the, the fact that he is able to write with such complexity and at the same time, he is such a nice human and mm-hmm. he has really created a space for like-minded artists to do what they love to do. I mean, that's just something that I would, I would love to do someday. Right. Of course. And of course, Mean Girls is your life right now and uh, you know and you stick with it as long as you like but what do you what do you hope to do next what does the what does the future look for you performing wise um performing wise i think there's some really interesting brown playwrights coming out of the woodworks right now Mm -hmm. um i would love to do some exciting new brown drama i think that'd be really fun yeah um i'd like to do something that really uh makes me flex my acting chops a little bit. Mm-hmm. That would be a fun time. But stage is sort of, you, you want to stay, do do a lot of the stage work first before you? I mean, uh, one of the things about being in being in this industry is that you kind of have to be open to whatever is coming. I mean, a year ago, I didn't realize that this is where <laughs> I would be. True. Um, yeah. But it's been, it's been the greatest ride of my life. Yeah. And so I can do nothing else but be open to whatever else might be coming. Absolutely. And I think we have time for one more question. One yeah. more question. We are getting a lot of this one. It's where would high school you sit at the lunch table? Oh. What lunch table? Okay. High school me, I was class president in high school. Wow. Um, okay. And so I many times didn't actually go to the cafeteria for lunch. I would like go, uh, I would take my lunch other places in the school and like be doing work. I was like mm-hmm. very much a workaholic. Okay. But if I were in the cafeteria, I'd probably be running a bake sale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Making that money. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Chief, thank you so much for coming by and joining thank us. Thank you for having me. You, um, where, where should they follow you on social media if they want to um, keep up with you? My Instagram is at Cheech Manohar okay. and my Twitter is at Mac and Cheech. <laughs> Mac and Cheech. I love it. Love a pun. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Of course, go see Mean Girls at the August Wilson Theater. 12 Tony Award nominations. We'll see how everything shakes down on Sunday. But you, sir, come back and join us anytime you would like. I would love that. Thank you so much. Thank Caitlin, you. why don't you take us out? Yep. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Uh, we are live at 5 every day on Facebook at 5 p.m. if you didn't get that already. Um, Our podcast version of today's episode will be up right after this, so you can listen to it wherever you get your own podcasts. And be sure to tune in tomorrow when we have the Boys in the Band star, Robin DeJesus.